Hello, Sooner Nation. Welcome back to the Sooner Surge. Thanks for all of you who have subscribed to our channel here on YouTube. If you have not yet, make sure you do that first. Also, check out the FanStop. FanStop.com for all your OU apparel needs. You don't need to go anywhere else. Join the Shirt of the Month Club. If you use code SURGE, you get 10% off the first three months. Uh, Midweek showdown, interstate style, uh, with OU versus TU in softball. And Hunter, a TU team that uh, is better than probably most are giving credit for, especially in a game like this. You got the Sooners coming off of winning two of three. Did not play well, obviously, in that second game against BYU. Struggled as of late a little bit. TU is not a team you want to allow uh, to, to kind of hang around. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. This game is at Hall of Fame Stadium. Uh, Six o'clock uh, on Tuesday, Hall of Fame Stadium, Hunter. What are you expecting to see from this Sooner Ball Club? I, I honestly don't know. Uh, expected BYU to be a sweep. That did not happen. I mean, they got beat Friday night, plain and simple. They got beat by BYU. They got outplayed, really outpitched, and uh, just offensively, it's it, it, the inconsistency has, I mean, it's spanned now, what? A week, week and a half. It's something you don't normally see. And you're going to have to be on your A game against Tulsa, like you said. Tulsa split the series with OSU. They had two games with them. They nearly won the second game. Just uh, got the game ended on one of the uh, leaving early calls that uh, has kind of been a controversy this year in softball with how much more we've seen those type of calls. So, yeah, you got to play good against Tulsa in Hall of Fame Stadium you want to get a win because you let them stay around they will upset you yeah and the Sooners I mean outside of Kelly Maxwell right now there's been a little struggle uh in, in the pitching staff uh this last week now uh, again 12 innings pitch, 11 back out and runs outside of that you know what are they going to do are they going to throw are they Away, uh, against TU midweek, Carly Keeney, I think, Kirsten Deal. I mean, there's plenty of options. I don't think they're going to throw Peyton Monticelli out there to start the game, but I expect it to be either Deal or May. That's what I would expect against TU, Hunter. I'm going to go Deal. Uh, that She's gotten more of the midweek starts. You didn't see her uh, starting this past weekend which was a little odd. We got Kelly Maxwell uh, Thursday, Saturday in that series. So, deal, maybe Maxwell. Uh, I think Kelly Maxwell is definitely an option. They've done it before. Bring her out of the pen if you need her. Uh, if it's a tight game, I mean, that's what can happen. But, I mean, the ideal situation for Oklahoma is to one, either obviously run rule. That's the uh, best thing you can do. Or if you have to go the full seven, get – five or so innings out of your starter, and then Monticelli, Keeney, Guerin, uh, and that kind of a combination of those three for the final innings to close it out. Yeah, and it was nice to see Alyssa Burrito, third game of that series, get going again. Uh, and again, they've shown uh, spots where they've been elite again, but the consistency, just be honest, hasn't been there uh, lately. And I, for one, I know probably, Hunter, you would agree, I'm ready to see a game where OU doesn't make a base running error, okay? And they consistently are putting runners on base inning after inning and getting them around. I mean, they're due for that. That's what's going to have to happen to be a championship caliber team. You heard Patty Gasso allude to the, the statement when she said this team is not where it needs to be yet. Uh, I think she was referring to really those mistakes that just championship teams do not make on the base pads. Uh, leaving runners on base, uh, things like that, errors, uh, throwing to first. So clean those things up, and I think uh, OU is going to be exactly where it needed to be. But uh, that's what I want to see as a Sooner fan is clean up some of the small stuff that OU fans are not used to seeing happen uh, at the University of Oklahoma. Yeah, absolutely. And Tulsa, really good pitching staff. Uh, 395 ERA as a staff in. Three qualifying uh, ERA pitchers, Kylie Nash, Mara Moore, 
Anika Anderson, all sub four, two, four, three ERAs. Uh, Kaiwi Nash, best pitcher on the staff with a two nine ERA and 49 strikeouts in 68 innings. So um, I think you'll see a combination of those three. That's at least if you're looking at how they have pitched against Oklahoma State. And all three of those pitchers appeared in at least one of those games. You saw in the most recent game against Oklahoma State, Nash came out of the pen uh, for them against Oklahoma State. So uh, it, it definitely can happen. And, again, you cannot slump in a game like this. Uh, Jada Coleman cooled off a little bit but still had some really impressive moments this past weekend. Uh, I mean, you're saying cool off when – she just barely moves to second on the team batting average, but makes up for it with the glove in center field. Yeah, and maybe this is a game where Kenzie Hansen gets a little bit of a break. Uh, look, I, Kenzie Hansen is elite. Uh, I, I've actually kind of missed Riley Ludlam a little bit in the lineup. I think she's had some big hits. She really has not played a lot, Hunter, in the last, what, eight, nine days. Uh, going back to the Texas series, obviously she wasn't playing a lot there. She didn't play much in the BYU series. Uh, so I expect maybe we see Riley Ludlam at least behind the plate, maybe, and let Kenzie Hansen uh, possibly be the extra hitter. But, uh, Hunter, who do you have for your Sooner standout against TU? Uh, Riley Boone. Something about playing in Hall of Fame Stadium for Riley Boone. Uh, leads the team in batting average right now at 443. Uh really had a great year and uh, expect some momentum plays for her uh, to get the team going. I mean, Riley Boone, usually in the nine-hole spot for the Sooners, will get Rowley started with just her clutch ability and the energy that she brings uh, that's just dispersed to the entire lineup. Yeah, and Riley Boone playing TU. I mean, Riley Boone from the 918, uh, so there's that as well, but I like what you said about Hall of Fame Stadium. I think maybe getting over to Hall of Fame Stadium is going to do this team a little bit of good. Away from Love's Field, uh, back to the place where they are very comfortable. It's a second home for them. Uh, it's going to have the, the feel of being in the College World Series. So all that, I think, bodes well for the University of Oklahoma. I'm actually going to go with Alyssa Brito to continue the hot streak and, and put two games really, really good back-to-back just like uh, some of these others have done in the past. It'll be interesting, Hunter, if there's a lineup switch. Patty Gasso has been pretty consistent uh, as of late in the lineup as far as batting order. Uh, so I think, it, what do you think? Are, are there going to be any significant changes? I don't foresee any. It seems like she's kind of getting a rhythm going on the batting order. Yeah, I, I don't think with the struggles that have been going on to continue to change it. Uh, but that, that's kind of what's happened. Uh, now, as of late, it's kind of stayed a little bit closer together, like you said. So, yeah, I, th I think it's just best to keep it kind of where you have had it. You did see a little bit of movement this past weekend. Brito moved way far down. That's a, a, a rarity, I would say. Like, I, I never expected a game where Alyssa Brito is batting seventh, I believe it was. So, uh, who knows? Got, got to get some consistently consistency going offensively because, I mean, Tulsa, they hit the ball pretty well as a team. They are batting 325, and they got two hitters batting over 400. So leadoff hitter with 411 batting average. They're going to get it going quick, I would say, uh, as I believe they are the away team. Not 100% sure on that. Hard to tell those neutral side games. Yeah, and uh, like you said, TU's got some got some power, got some pop, got some uh, good average hitters. But uh, hopefully this is a game where Sooners can also maybe throw a shutout. It's been a while. Well, one game against BYU, I think they had a shutout. But uh, we'll see what happens there at Hall of Fame Stadium. I do know it's going to be very gusty out. Uh, winds expected up to 26 to 36 miles an hour. Uh, maybe by game time that has lessened a little bit. But – if it's blowing out, uh, get ready. Warm. Yeah, and it's a warm day. Uh, highs in the 80s. Be flying. Uh, ball should be flying in Hall of Fame Stadium. Yeah, let's hope whoever is going for the Sooners keeps the ball down and away and 
There it is, guys. There's the preview for OU versus TU interstate rivalry here as OU takes on the Golden Hurricane. Uh, Six o'clock, Hall of Fame Stadium. Thanks again for watching the content here at the Sooner Surge. We'll see you next time. Boomer.